Hi, this is the screencast for Unit 1, Sections 1 through 4. So this uh, slideshow, I posted this in the, the Unit 1 review folder, so you can refer back to it whenever you want. Uh, these are just a few videos that I posted on there that you can watch these if, if you want. It's optional. So a few things to keep in mind as you're going through the reviews. Um, first of all, everyone is responsible for doing the review assignments. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're taking the AP test or not, the review assignments and quizzes are still part of the class and everyone needs to do those. Um, also, try to make sure um, that you're keeping up with the work. Uh, try to set it aside a specific time each day to work on your chemistry. Um, if you're having problems keeping up, just please let me know right away. Um, I'm gonna try to keep everything to 30 minutes a day, max. Um, and I'm also going to try to have things set up so you can work ahead if you want, but uh, that's up to you. And then keep in mind that throughout this whole process, communication is very important. So if you're having issues of any sort with the questions or keeping up with the, the work, just uh, please let me know. All right, so the first... Uh, First section is 1.1 on moles and molar mass. So the learning objective here is to calculate quantities of a substance or its relative number of particles using dimensional analysis and the mole concept. So the essential knowledge is you want to be able to make mole conversions. And that's just uh, using these mole equivalents listed at the bottom of the page and setting up conversion factors to convert from one quantity to another. The process looks like this. Uh, you take the given quantity, set up a conversion factor of mole equivalents, and solve for the unknown, in this case atoms of xenon. And to help with this process, I, I put this roadmap for conversions right over here. So you can just simply look and see, well, what am I given? What am I looking for? And follow the, the conversion factor to get there. Uh, next, we have 1.2 on mass spectroscopy of elements. So the learning objective here is to explain the quantitative relationship between the mass spectrum of an element and the masses of the element's isotopes. The essential knowledge, that's to determine the identity of an isotope and its relative abundance, and to use mass spectrum data to estimate the atomic mass of an element. Um, over here, this is what a mass spectrometer looks like. Uh, this is what it does. Um, it takes charged particles, puts them through a magnetic field, and the amount of displacement or how much they curve depends on the mass. Heavier particles will deflect less because they have more inertia. Lighter particles deflect more because they have less inertia, and then it separates the particles based on their mass. The data for a mass spectrometer looks like this. So you end up with these uh, peaks which uh, show you on, on the y-axis you have relative abundance. Um, this could also be percent abundance. And then you have the, the masses on the bottom. So in this case, we have um, particles with a mass of 10, and you also have particles with a mass of 11. And based on the relative abundance, we can estimate the atomic mass for this uh, element. And since the 11 peak is quite a bit higher, the average atomic mass, you would expect it to be in between 10 and 11, but much closer to 11 based on the height of this peak. So because of that, we can then figure out um, the element by looking at our periodic table and figuring out, well, what element has a molar mass that, that fits that criteria? And that would be boron, which has a mass of 10.8. So this would be boron 10, the shorter peak right here, and the taller peak would be boron 11. So two different isotopes of boron, and then boron 11 just uh, it is much more abundant in nature. Okay, next we have 1.3, elemental composition of pure substances. So the learning objective for this section is to explain the quantitative relationship between the elemental composition by mass and the empirical formula of a pure substance. 
So the essential knowledge is uh, pure substances are elements or compounds. And then we also want to know about the law of def definite proportions, which states that the ratio of masses in a pure sample of a compound is always the same. So for example, we take water, H2O. So in a sample of pure water, if we were to find the percent by mass of each element, um, hydrogen ends up being 11%, oxygen ends up being 89%. So what this law of definite proportions means is that no matter where we find water, no matter how much of it we have, it's going to be 11% by mass hydrogen, 89% by mass oxygen. And this is also a way to determine the purity of a substance. So if we find percentages that are not 11 and 89, that tells you that it's not a pure sample of water. And then along with that, we have um, mass percentages and mass percent is just the mass of the element divided by the mass of the compound times 100 to get a percentage. And then we have empirical formulas. That's the last part of this section. An empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in a compound. So for example, there's glucose right here. The molecular formula is C6H12O6. Well, all these subscripts are divisible by 6, so it reduces it down to CH2O. And this is considered the empirical formula, the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in the compound. All right, then the last part uh, is 1.4 composition of mixtures. So the learning objective here is to explain the quantitative relationship between the elemental composition by mass and the composition of substances in a mixture. So the essential knowledge is mixtures contain particles of more than one type. So there could be two different compounds mixed together. But the key here is that the relative proportions can vary. So you can have different percentages of each particle that, that's in that mixture. And that's all for today. So check AP Classroom. You're going to have uh, one problem, one or two problems for today's uh, FRQs. And then um, we're not going to do multiple choice questions anymore. It's going to be all free response questions. So you can either submit those um, answers through AP Classroom, or you can take a picture of them and email them directly to me. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.